So the day was filled up with therapies or sitting around. I couldn't really watch TV because I couldn't really see. So I got no therapy for my eyes. Um, they actually didn't even know what to do about my eyes. Um, and I kept asking, what can I do about my eyes? And they said, well, we don't know. But anyway, they were working on my physical walking and progressing. Um, and I would get visits from my wife and my child, who was only two months old, and he actually hated going there. He would cry the whole time he was there, which was very upsetting, but I kind of understand because the place smelled pretty bad, and it wasn't very quiet. It was very noisy because that's one of the things about sleep, which I'll tell you about. Um, but my wife would visit me, and God bless her um, because she knew how horrible I had horrible time I had with eating and um, she would actually puree food like stews and stuff like that I'd have my uh, aunts and mother-in-law would make me food and she would actually puree it and bring it in surreptitiously and I would probably could have died if I ate that but still I ate it and uh, I think it kept the weight on and probably um, helped me live a little bit longer um, and didn't lose as much weight as I I would have if I was eating the food that they gave me. Um, her visits were wonderful. I remember one particular visit. Um, there was, uh, you know, I, I loved coffee and muffins at the time. And there was one particular muffin, a lemon poppy seed muffin, which was actually a, a sour cream poppy seed muffin. It wasn't a lemon poppy seed muffin. It was a stupid little mix that, you know, was you bought from the muffin shop, the coffee shop. And I used to get that almost daily before my stroke. You know, you get in the car, you drive, you get the coffee, the muffin. It was one of the things that made life pleasant. And um, I missed it. And I asked her, could you bring a cup of coffee and a lemon poppy seed muffin? And she did. And uh, it was in the early, actually late spring, early summer. And there was a an area you can wheel me out to. And, you know, there was a, a family, my sister, her her um, husband, my wife, and uh, a couple other people came to visit me. And there we were having the coffee muffin. You can actually sneak this. Um, if I was away from the nurses, they wouldn't see. And it was outside. And um, so I snuck it. And didn't you know, I had the muffin. And I gagged. I nearly suffocated. Um, and um, that was pretty disappointing. Uh, I couldn't eat it because uh, I couldn't swallow it. Um, it made my wife cry, and that was a very sad moment, realizing that, yeah, i got to eat this lousy food, and uh, I can't have solid food right now. My life is still quite limiting. Um, another thing that was interesting, my wife was going to take a position, uh, a job. She got offered a job to work for a physician in Boston, um, and the physician was a uh, OBGYN, and was a pretty good job. It was an office manager position. And she was coming to tell me that. I didn't know it at the time. And I said, oh, geez, I have exciting news for you. So she was pretty thrilled to come in, and then she saw me. And it was in the middle of the day. Um, my son wasn't with her. And I said, I want to show you something that I was able to do today. So um, this was probably three, four weeks within five, six weeks into therapy. And uh, I had her wheel me out, and I said, you see this area here? I walked around that without basically more than one person just holding on to my belt. Uh, I was able to walk around. And I, at the time, thought it was pretty far. Again, you got to understand, I can't, couldn't really see all that well. She looked at it, and she told me this later, after I had recovered more, and this was actually three years. She says, you know, Greg, I was actually up for a position, and I could accept it. I was actually given the option to accept it or not. But when I came to visit you and saw how far you were able to walk, I had decided not to do it because I felt you were worse off than I actually thought. And that was actually, after she, to she told me at the time, I would have really been bummed. But afterwards, I said, oh boy, I'm really sorry that um, I had that impact on your career. Um, she felt that she really couldn't take that job because she needed to be home more in order to take care of me. Um, so that actually kind of hit home a little bit because her career would have been a little different if I hadn't had the stroke. So not only did the stroke affect me, but it affected my family. 
Uh, and that's actually one of the things about strokes that no one really uh, looks into is the effect on the loved ones, the caregivers. Um, and I give my wife a great deal of credit for sticking by me and hanging in with me. One of her friends had said, well, after the stroke, are you going to divorce him now? And she says, well, of course not. I'm not going to divorce I love him, and it's for better or for worse. My wife is an amazing woman to hang in there with me because it wasn't easy. And um, you'll hear more stories. Thank you.